Code Please. Welcome to Code Please. In this channel, I try to teach you a little bit about computer programming using the Elixir language. If you find this content useful, please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Now let's get into today's video. Welcome to a brand new episode of our Honest Chat tutorial. In this one, we are finally going to implement the ability to send and receive messages in our room page. You will also notice that I have upgraded Elixir to version 1.13, which comes with a bunch of new features, but also with amazing compilation uh, performance improvements. On Windows, you can install this new version by just going to the Elixir website and downloading and installing the Windows package. It should be very straightforward. Regarding the chat application itself, one thing I want to get out of the way right now is that we will begin by implementing the messages that get sent as a whole as opposed to my final objective of sending each character in real time. The reason for this is that I want to focus in this episode uh, on the sending, receiving and message storing features as opposed to the real time functionality. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so here's what we're trying to achieve with this episode. We have two browser windows. I have in one side, I have uh, one user logged in. On the other side, I have another user. And so the idea is that if both users join the same room, they are able to send messages to each other like so. And you get instant uh, feedback on either side of what is happens, as you can see. And if a user moves to another room and then rejoins that room, it should see the messages that they have. And the interesting part here is that none of these messages are actually stored on the server. So they are stored in the local storage of the browser of each of the users. Now, local storage is something that pretty much all modern web browsers uh, support. And it's uh, just a, a tiny bit of space that the browsers have reserved for uh, developers to put some information there that they might want. In our case, we're using it to store all the messages for all our rooms. And this way, the server doesn't have to know about uh, any of the messages that the users exchange. Everything is stored locally. And to achieve our goals, this is more or less what's happening behind the scenes. So the user has, the user one has uh, his browser. He types something into the box and submits to the live view that is running on the server for that particular um, WebSocket session. And then the live view is going to send that to PubSub which is a, a publishing and subscribing mechanism within Phoenix that allows different pieces of code to communicate uh, between themselves without being directly coupled. So the live view posts a message to the PubSub to a topic, and then any piece of code that is subscribed to that particular topic on PubSub is going to receive a message whenever something is posted. So what's going to happen effectively is that the live view posts to PubSub and immediately since live view one and live view two for the user two are subscribed to PubSub to that particular topic, they both receive a message. And then the end result is that that message gets sent back to the browser of each of the users. And then the browser stores it on local storage for each of the users. And additionally, every time the user opens a browser or actually opens one of the rooms, so clicks a, a room link, the browser is going to read from the local storage and populate the live view state initially with that. And that, that's how you're able to see the messages when you click on, on a room. And finally, just a, a small note on PubSub and how it works. It's You can imagine PubSub as a, um, a stream of messages that get sent to it. It doesn't really know anything about these messages other than the fact that they are assigned to a particular topic that you decide on. So in our case, for instance, uh, one piece of code could send, could say, okay, I want to publish this message or this bit of structure or this bit of data to a topic called rooms that would create a message on PubSub. And then anyone that has subscribed to that particular topic, rooms, is going to receive that message whenever it gets sent. So this is a way to have code that is not highly coupled because you're working in an event-based uh, way. You're not calling the, the, the other piece of code synchronously. You're just shooting it into the pub sub cloud, quote unquote. And then anyone that is subscribed to that particular topic is going to receive that message and handle it how, how it wants. Let's start by bumping um, a couple of libraries up. Namely, uh, we should go to our mix uh, exs file and we should change the Elixir version to 1.13, which I already installed. I also want to up the version of Phoenix Live View because some fixes have come up in 0.17.5. So let's do that. And then we can go here and do mix depths.get or .update. 
And actually, let's do minus minus also update all our libraries if there are minor minor versions updated as well. Once that is done, let's uh, fire up our server once again. Let it compile. Just as a side note, since we upgraded the Elixir version, you might get some errors compiling some things like Cowboy or, or something like that. In that case, the best thing you can do is go into your project folder and delete the underscore build directory and then try to start your server again. This will trigger a recompilation of everything and it's, uh, it's usually a good thing to do when whenever you upgrade the elixir version in case you have problems like that so let's start writing some code i explained the process uh, or i explained the, what we're trying to achieve in the beginning of the tutorial and now i'll try to explain uh the code i will not write all the code from scratch i will probably copy paste a lot of it if not everything but i'll try my best to explain what each piece of the code does and how it fits into the global picture that i explained in the beginning so i will go into my index live view which is the our main live view the first thing i want to do here is i want to make sure that this live view subscribes to a particular topic in pubsub so we can receive messages from other users basically and ourselves as well on the mount function what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to see if the socket is already connected and if that's the case i am going to subscribe to the phoenix.pubsub.subscribe to the application pubsub honest chat to the topic well, honest chat.pubsub and the topic is rooms then i also want to make sure that our messages component knows about the current user this will become clear later um, for now i'll just pass in also the current user here on this component finally i want to implement a function that is going to handle the messages that this live view receives from pubsub so whenever any process on the virtual machine publishes something to pubsub on this application to the topic rooms this live view is going to get a message on its process with this format so this is a format that i chose feel free to choose your own I just said, okay, this is a message and the room ID where this message is being posted to is this one. And the message itself, it's this one. And the message is just a structure with who sent the message, the contents of the message, the timestamp, and maybe some other information. And then what I want to do here is I want to get the current room where we are on the page. And if the current room where we are matches the room ID for this particular message, then I know this message is intended to that room. And what I want to do in that case is send a message to the messages component saying that there is a new message coming in. So this makes sure that no matter who sends the message, all the live views that are subscribed to the rooms topic and where the users are actually looking at that room at that particular time, they are going to receive that message and this message gets added to the room. The side effect of this is that since we're not storing messages anywhere except the clients, you have to actually be in the room to receive the message. So if you are in a different room, you will not receive a message. So, but that's part of the design of the application that we decided on in the beginning. Next thing I want to do is take care of a little bug that we have where if the browser window is too small, we never see the sidebar because this is part of the responsive design that we kind of stole from uh, tail lead components so the way to get around this is to go into the uh, sidebar component and remove the hidden uh, default class here and if we do this then we get our sidebar back and now comes a big chunk of the codes that i'm actually going to paste and this is going to happen on the messages uh, component as you might have guessed because this is where we handle most of the well all of the uh, message sending and receiving apart from the live view intercepting the the pub sub events and and then pushing them to messages so one thing i want to do here is i don't really need this invite link copy it falls when there is uh, no room so this update function is actually called when we are in this particular state here so the messages component has not joined any room yet there's no point in having that assign there for the the invite link copy then on this one here i want to do quite a bit of changes uh namely I want to accept an ID. So I want to match against the ID that is passed in from the component. And this is mo mostly so we can communicate with this component uh, directly. Then I want to also get the current user, which we defined on the live view. We, we passed on the live view. And apart from that, this is also going to be a little bit changed. So I want to assign to the socket the ID. The room is the same thing we still get it like this i also want to assign the invite link copied to false because we never we start by not having sent the invite link then i want to instantiate messages as empty so there are no messages when you first mount this component and i also want to set the current user or assign the current user and then after this happens after this assign happens what i want to do here let me just get this out of 
here first and put it in a pipe because then I also want to pipe another thing, which is send an event to the browser telling the browser to load messages from local storage. OK, and I need some data for this. I need to pass in which room uh, messages I want to load from the local storage. So let's just pass in the room ID. After this one, I also need another update function. And this update function is going to be triggered by the live view. So whenever the live view does this, sends this update, it passes in new message. So we're going to pattern match against that on a new function here. And I'm just going to copy paste the, the code. We're going to pattern match against that. And the net result of this particular update is appending a new message or in this case prepending a new message to our messages assigned and we reverse it so we always see the newest version on the bottom instead of on on top and then we also push a new message to the browser basically to tell it to store this, this new message on the local storage and this way we can keep the history going on on the local storage on the browser and that's that's how we do it and uh, the way we push it is we just say, OK, it's this room ID and we actually don't need this field ID. I had this before I actually split up the clearing of the input field from the new message events. So we don't need that. We just need the room ID and the message itself being passed to the browser. Then after that, on our render function, we need to, for one, define the ID here for this component so we can easily send it messages from the live view like we saw before. And then I also want to specify a PHX hook with the name load messages from local storage. A PHX hook allows us to, on the client side, hook into the mount lifetime of the of the live view. So what's going to happen in practice is the live view gets mounted on the server. And then once it gets mounted, there's a an event, a JavaScript event being triggered on the client that is going to tell the client to actually send the messages from the local storage that it has into the live view. And that's that's what this hook is about, is about basically connecting the server side part of the of the lifetime of the of the, of the live view with the events on the browser. And after this div where we have uh, basically the header information for the room. So if we go here and we join this shiny room, this is the, the header part that we're seeing here. Now we need a part to put our uh, messages themselves. So I'm just going to copy paste the code as well because it's quite a lot. And um, so what we're basically doing here is we're iterating the messages that we have, that we have assigned on the socket. And then for each one of them, we're just showing the image of the user that posted it, the, the user email, the timestamp and the body. And then we have a small form in the end where you can input new messages and on submit of that form, we are going to basically send an event to ourselves, to the messages component in this case. That's what PHX target myself uh, does. And we are going to send it a new message that has this structure, basically has a, a body and, and that's pretty much it. So now I can also get rid of this, all these comments that I had here. And after this handle event for copying the invite link, I want to have another uh, handle event, which is going to take care of our uh, form submission for the new message. And we're going to pattern match against uh, the structure that we had on the form, basically message and body. And then we're going to check if the, there's something to post. Actually, uh, we are going to instantiate a new message here and broadcast that message to PubSub to the to the rooms topic with the structure that we saw before that the live view is going to catch or basically all the live views that are connected to this room are going to catch and then in the end we're going to push an event to the browser saying oh please clear this input because if you click the button you you might have noticed that the form also has a button if you click the button then live view does clear the input field because it it kind of loses focus and it submits the form and the the field gets automatically cleared but if you press enter, which also submits the form, then it doesn't get cleared. And that's why I send this clear input to the browser. So the, the browser itself can clear the input just in any case, to make sure it, it gets cleared. And then we just need to uh, implement a couple of functions that will deal with the browser event that reads the messages from local storage. So JavaScript will look, look at the messages that it has. And then it's going to send an event back to this component with the, the format load messages and the actual messages. And then we just do assigns and live view basically refreshes the state and loads the messages into the into the room. And then as a final step, I also want a, a little helper function to 
show a Gravatar URL for a user based on the email. This is just basically the way you calculate the hash to put on the URL to display a Gravatar for a particular email address. So now we need some code on the JavaScript side to be able to handle or to facilitate handling the local storage. So I'm going to create a file called storage.js where I'm going to copy paste a few uh, functions here, uh, namely one to save the messages, um, save a particular list of messages into local storage. And the way I'm doing that is, so local storage is, a, is basically a, a key pair, um, a key value uh, pair kind of store. So the key I'm using is messages uh, colon room ID to store the messages in. And then I just store it as a, as a JSON string. And then to load messages, I do the exact opposite. I get a, I get the item uh, messages room ID, and then I just JSON parse that value. And if I want to clear these messages, I didn't use it for the project itself. I use it for testing mainly. If I wanted to clear the messages for a particular room ID, I can use this uh, function. And the export here pretty much allows us to hook this into the app, app JS. So if we go there now, we can go to under top bar, we can import everything from storage as storage, and then we can use it. So now let's implement the hook that we're going to have to load the messages from the local store. This is what I was saying before, so once the live view mounts, this particular JavaScript function gets called on the browser, on the client browser. And then we add an event listener saying that whenever we receive this load messages event, we are going to basically get all the messages for that particular room ID. And then we push a new event saying load messages into the component messages. And this will trigger this particular function here, which will assign the messages to the socket. It's a bit confusing, but it's the way I found to interfere the least possible with the live view uh, life cycle, and it seems to work. Now we also need to pass in the hooks into the live socket. So here where we have params, we should also, also pass in the, the hooks that we just uh, created. And then we need a new window listener. We can just go under the copy invite link here and we add a new event listener for the new message. So whenever we type something on the box and press enter or press the button, uh, this will get fired on the client browser. And what we're going to do is we're going to re retrieve all the messages from local storage that we already have. We're going to push the new message into it and then we're going to save it back into local storage. And finally, we need the clear input event listener as well. Whenever the live view wants to clear the input field, you can just do that. The browser does it itself. And I think that should probably be it. We should just be able to test it. Let's see if we go into our shiny room and we type something, we get it. And if we refresh the page and we go into shiny room, we don't get it. Oh, I know why. I actually put the hooks on the wrong place. I put the hooks as uh, inside the parameters and actually it needs to be at this level. So at the level of the, the, the arguments that get passed into the socket. So if we say this and we go back, we should get our message just loaded from the local storage. Pretty cool. So let's see if we can make this actually work with uh, another browser as well. So I'm going to log in as another user and I haven't actually joined this rumor as, as this user. So let's just copy uh, our invite link here and make sure that this is still working. And it is. So if I go into shiny room, I don't have anything on this particular browser because I wasn't paying attention to the room. I wasn't actually in the, in the room when that message was sent. But if I know send a, a new message from here, I should get it in both uh, the browsers. And then if I continue the conversation on uh, this side, I should get everything. And if I refresh this and I refresh that and I go into the room, I should see each of them should be see their own kind of messages that have been stored on each of the local storage uh, facilities on their browsers. So pretty cool, right? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode where we discussed uh, PubSub and also local storage and how it all ties together. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking and sharing with your friends. It really helps the channel to grow. Thank you.